Welcome back everybody. Uh, this is going to be another video in my uh, time-lapse model build series. Uh, episode 9 actually. Uh, so it's I guess the third, third batch of models that I've completed and made these video series of. Uh, this particular one's a little bit different, um, not necessarily in the way I built it, but for what it is. And it's the first commission build uh, that I've done a video for. Uh, so this particular model is actually done for a coworker of mine. Um, it was one that was given to him years ago by uh, um, by somebody, an older gentleman I believe gave it to him. Um, and uh, he never really got around to building it and then uh, decided he wanted it done and asked if I could uh, finish it off for him and get it done. Uh, so there's a few issues with the kit. Uh, there were some parts missing, a bit of the cockpit had been missing, uh, so I had to do a bit of work around there to make it work. Um, and I picked up an aftermarket set of decals because it was uh, definitely an older kit. So the kit itself is this one here. It is Hasegawa's uh, 172nd scale F-18. Um, it's actually an older kit. It's from the early 80s. So really one of the first generation of what we consider the modern kits with engraved panel lines. Um, and I used uh, this decal sheet here, the Canuck decals uh, standard CF-18 line bird um, for the model. So as I said, I, uh, a bit of work I went into this. Um, it did include resin seats, uh, but was missing quite a bit of the cockpit. So you'll see how I managed to put it all together. Uh, so here we go. Um, time lapse of my 172nd scale CF-18 commission build. And as always, my name is Sean. And this is Sean's Aviation. So as usual with these aircraft kits, I started out building the cockpit. And as I mentioned, um, part of the cockpit was actually missing. So the cockpit tub itself was not included in this kit. Uh, so you'll see here, I just used some sheet plastic and make some measurements and I cut out uh, what will become cockpit floors, um, just out of sheet plastic and then uh, get them to the right height so that the seats sit at the proper height once I get the canopy installed.
So here we are, um, a bit of a different project that you would normally see in my build series. So I plan on making um, a base uh, for this F-18. I usually make the bases, as you've seen in the previous uh, build log videos, out of those wooden bases that I stain. I think this one I'm going to make it an MDF uh, just to make my life a little easier. Um, it also is a little thicker for what I need and I have a little bit more play with what I can pull off on something like this uh, versus uh, uh, something I want to stain. I want to paint it so I'm not going to waste a good uh, a good base. I'm going to probably use MDF. Um, I'm also going to use it to make a, a bit of a mold and you'll see what I'm planning in a second. So um, I'm going to be using, it's for this, obviously it's inside this video, so it's for the, uh, the F-18. And the, the person I'm building it for wants it sitting on a stand, a little bit nose up and a little bit banked to one side, kind of as if it's doing a, you know, an air show pass. Um, so I need to figure out a way to do it. And my plan is going to be using the exhaust and using, I have some acrylic rod here and I plan on basically making, uh, coming out of the tailpipe. And I have a tailpipe here and you can see it is almost a perfect fit. Like it just sits on there, you know, like effectively like a glove. So a little bit of epoxy on the end and it just press fits in there quite nicely. Don't have to worry about it. You can almost see now with just a little bit of glue, you know, how well that will sit on the back of that F-18. Now the issue is um, I'm probably going to drill a hole just because right now it's all being held on by the exhaust stack and there's not much holding in place. So what I'm going to do is cut the, drill the back out. This is going to slide. You'll see it's almost, almost the same diameter as that. So if I drill with the same diameter from this side through, this will then pass through the ejection, uh, the ejection, the exhaust, uh, jet exhaust at the back, the afterburner. And you'll see, I want to zoom in here a bit so you guys can get a good view of what my plan is. So you'll see it's going to come down the center and then there's this right here, the step inside the fuselage. I'm going to put a plate against that, some thick styrene, bump it up against this rear of this, give it some strength. This will then come in and sit tight against that bulkhead. And then I will use some, again, some sheet styrene um, spacers inside to give it a bit of strength. So it will sit against something sort of inside of its own little home. Um, I might even drill through those, um, through those, uh, um, the plate and give it a bit of, a bit of strength to hold on to. What I have to figure out is whether I'm going to mount it through one or mount it through two. And that's a decision I haven't come to yet. Um, so what I need to figure out is what angle it's going to be if I fit two, because on that angle, I have to have two different radiuses, two different curves. But if I take the circles, right, if you can imagine them, and you start angling until the radius is, it's a little hard to explain, but if I put it so that the things will touch, it's a bit of an extreme angle. So I think I might just do it through one. I think I might only use a single acrylic rod and just mount it through through one. Although, you know what, now that I'm having this conversation, now, I'll just mount it through one. going to mount it through one one injection one um, exhaust it's just going to make my life a lot less complicated um, cuz yeah that angle it's almost a 45 degree angle
yeah, very happy with that. I'm not going to complain at all for a first attempt. Um, not going to complain at all, really. It, did, it didn't work out perfectly, so I do have two different radiuses, radii, but it works out in the sense that I wanted to have two separate sort of radiuses on it. So it works out almost exactly as I need. And I am going to go with it. So stay tuned. I'm uh, going to get some more work done on these and I hopefully will have a bit of work on the base done soon. Stay tuned.
So here we are about two months into the build. I uh, realized I never did a uh, mid-build update on this particular kit. Uh, so um, as you'll see, I got some progress done. Um, it's, it's as you've been seeing with, with the build. Um, I'm, I'm pretty much to a glued fuselage. Um, as I'm sure you've noticed, I've been doing a lot of finicky work. Um, so I mean, right off the top, um, we don't have the cockpit tubs, as I mentioned at the beginning. Um, so there's no cockpit tubs, so I'm just using the, the co empty cockpits the way they are with the seats and everything else. The instrument panels are just blank. I didn't do anything with those. It's a 170 second scale. You're not going to see too much at this scale when it's glued together. Uh, the big issue I've had are uh, the intakes. Uh, intakes are always a pain with the jet. This particular one, it's an older Hasegawa kit and it shows um, inside the intake. Um, I'll zoom in a little bit so you can hopefully see what I'm trying to deal with here. Uh, inside the intake, there's just a, a, a blanker plate. It's just a plate right there. Let's see if you can see it better on this side. It's just a plate. You can, it's just right there. So there's a plate, it, it gets painted black just to hide the openness and it does kind of look like there's something in there. But it's not the best and there's not a lot of gluing surface on the inside of this intake. Um, so it wasn't the easiest to get those in place. Uh, there's no positive pin, you just kind of figure out where it fits. And then when I put this side um, piece on here, it actually popped that internal plate out and I had to fish it out and glue it back in place and get it all cleaned up. So luckily these seams are relatively good. You know, you can kind of make out the fact that there's a seam in here, but with everything else that's going on, um, this is usually a pretty uh, covered place. So just a little bit of work on that and I'll have that seam cleaned up. Uh, same along the bottom here. Um, it follows existing seam lines with this uh, pylon on the side. So even up in here, it's a little easier to hide these seams. Um, the intake fronts haven't fit the best. Uh, this side in particular was a pretty bad fit. This side here I got cleaned up and blended quite nicely. This side for whatever reason stuck out. I've given it a bit of sanding. It's still going to need a little bit of putty uh, in here just to get rid of this lip and then a bit of sanding and I'll clean all that up. And then there's still the interior plates on either side that have to go in. Um, and again, as from before, this piece here was missing. So this is a, a replacement piece of sheet styrene. So until I get some, some putty, I saw some putty, sorry, some primer onto this, I'll see what these look like and they might need some more putty and sanding. Uh, the seam at the front, um, not the best, but luckily it uh, cleaned up nicely. There's uh, just a slight lip on this side, but until I get some, some primer on there and see what she looks like, I'm not gonna fiddle around with that too, too much. It might be okay, it is. Might take a little bit more. Uh, a bit of work. Uh, air brake was glued down. There's a few lips. I'll just give that a quick kind of once over with some sandpaper. It's a nice tight fit. Just the hint of sandpaper to knock some edges down and that should be a nice fit. The uh, exhausts are glued on now. I'm probably going to mask and either hand paint or mask and uh, either hand paint them or mask them and airbrush them uh, later on after I get everything else painted. Um, they're going to be the last thing I do. I had to glue them on now to make sure that it fits with the stand, which I'll show you in a little bit. But I had to make sure they fit properly before I can move on. And also, as I'm sure you just saw, because this is in the middle of my build video, um, I'm starting to glue on the landing gear doors. I'm doing them you know, one at a time, bit by bit. Make sure that everything lines up as nice as possible. Uh, and then again, right now, these are going on quite nicely. Um, just a little bit of uh, sanding just to knock the edges down. Uh, gear doors are notoriously bad fit. If you look at the real one with the gear doors up, there's all kinds of gaps and overlays and you can clearly see the outline of the doors. So I'm just going to give it just the slightest of sandings just to knock some of these edges down. But I'm not going to putty and sand anything. I'm going to leave them uh, open like that just so it actually looks like, you know, a little bit more realistic with that one. I might do a little bit, but we'll see. We'll see how bad it looks with a coat of primer and I'll go from there. Primer is always a good, uh, a good test for how things look. So it's coming along. I'll show you the stand. Um, I'm videotaped some of that as well. I might edit and cut it from when I was building it, but you've seen the beginning of it. But this is what the stand looks like now. So I've marked uh, my lines where I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna use a table saw to ensure that those cuts, are, these, by the way, aren't glued in. I can still pop these out um, and as needed, so they will be taken out when I do my cuts. I'll mark them. Um, so I'm gonna cut the square down to this size and then I'm going to angle the, the blade uh, to a 45 and I'm probably going to bevel the edge but I'll bevel the edge to not, not a cut like, for example I don't want to take the 45 right to the bottom I might just cut a 45 you know something like that you know leave a little bit of a lip at the bottom and maybe cut the 45 something like that I think that's what I'm going to do maybe even a little less something I'm not going to go half 
but I'm going to leave a bit of a gap on the bottom and I want to cut it. It's almost like a routed edge, but just a cut 45 all the way around. Uh, and then MDF, I'm just going to give it a sanding, knock the, uh, these edges down so they're nice and smooth. These were all cut, uh, no, I guess these were cut with a table saw back in the day. Might have been a, might have been a, uh, my hand saw, but either way, I'll send it through the table saw, square up all my edges, 45 all the edges, and then you'll get a sneak peek on what it's going to look like. Basically, once it's all epoxied in, um, you can see the angle, and then from the front, it does have, um, I'll zoom out a little bit here so you can get a good look. If I square the stand up with the bottom of the camera ledge as in level, you'll see that the uh, the airplane actually has a little bit of a kick to it. So it'll have a nice um, bit of a bank angle going on, so it looks like you know, a bit of a, di a dynamic pose, right? So it's not going to be perfectly level. So it'll have a nice dynamic pose to it. Something interesting. Um, I can still play with these a little bit as needed uh, before I pop them in place. Get a nice looking, uh, you know, a nice bank angle. So you can see it's not going to be level. It'll have a bit of a turning bank. So anyways, looking good. Very excited. It's going to look good on the shelf. Um, nice profile. See all the detail. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, that's the F-18. So stay tuned. Uh, my next actual talking update. Hopefully I will have this um, assembled and uh, ready for primer. Stay tuned.
so here we are. Bit of a quick update on the F-18 uh, before we go any further with the build. Uh, I've been putting a little bit of uh, primer on this to check some of the seams. So as you've been seeing, I've got the majority of the airframe together. I've left the tails off now. Uh, it's just easier to work with uh, what I have here before I put the tails on. Um, and there won't be a whole lot of filling. If there is any filling with the tails, I'm probably going to use white glue more than putty. So there won't be any sanding involved. So I'm trying to get all the sanding done and cleaned up. And then I'll glue the tails on right before I'm ready to paint. Um, so a um, couple of areas. This wing here, um, as you've seen, I've, I've done putting on the wings. This side here came out nice. I just got to clean up some of these lost uh, panel lines and everything will look good. This side, there's still a little bit of a step in here. So it's going to need a bit more putty and a bit more sanding. Um, I didn't do any putty around this uh, air brake. I just pop fitted it, glued and sanded the edges. It's looking good. I'm happy with that fit. I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um, pretty much ready to go as it is. I didn't prime up into here yet around the cockpit. Uh, I was going to wait till I get the canopies installed. Uh, the nose, I've been told the nose was a bit of a bad fit. Somebody else online had mentioned that they had fought and fought and fought the nose. Mine went on pretty good. There's still a little bit of a step. I need to do a little bit more sanding, um, but it's not nearly as bad as it could have been. So I had a little, little tiny bit of cleanup around the nose left to do. Not too, too worried. Ah, nuts. I just knocked the... HUD glass off. Anyways, uh, nose gear, pretty happy with that. I might clean up this side piece here, just fill it in a little bit. I might even just use white glue to fill in that gap a little bit. And the underwing strakes, um, this side, which is where I use the replacement piece, came out relatively nice. This kit piece still needs a bit of work. Uh, there's a few steps along the side in here. Um, the outline for where the steps are, I'm probably going to just fill in um, because this scale and you're not really going to notice it so as i said i'm going to clean all this up a little bit more in here i got to do a little bit of cleanup in back here a little bit more putty back in here uh, otherwise um main the intakes which were the bane of my existence turned out relatively well i'm pretty happy with the way those are all blended i'm not going to worry too much probably just a quick a um, little bit of polish on those with some finer grit sandpaper knock some ridges down very happy with the intakes and then um, the go uh, main gear doors, um, there are a few little steps I'm going to probably work on a little bit. I'm not going to go too, too crazy on this. I might just knock the edge off the front here, uh, clean up. No more puttying, I don't think, just some more sanding, just to clean up some of the edges on that. And then uh, I'm happy with it. So overall, I'm pretty happy with how this went together. Uh, in this area here, I might do a little bit of white glue, clean up just to, you know, things look pretty but I'm not too too worried about it overall I'm very happy with how this looks right now um, you know like uh, they, uh, there's a chance you know I mean depending on what kind of build I was looking at you know I would even leave some of this how it is now but um, basically it's not going to be much there'll be a little bit of white glue a um, little bit of sanding on the main gears a uh, little bit of white glue in these little corners here by the intakes a little bit of white glue along the uh, gear door, so just sanding, white glue, white glue, a little bit of puttying and sanding along these strakes, not much at all, and a little bit of putty on that wing. Other than that, it's just a bit of, a bit of polish, and then um, finish giving it a coat of primer. Uh, again, you'll see I've got the uh, seats, uh, ejection seats are glued in, i got to glue the HUD back on as I just knocked it off. Get all that glued back together, get the canopy glued on, uh, get the canopy masked, and then it's going to be ready for paint. Um, so yeah, it's coming right along.
then here again, as usual, I am masking the canopy. Uh, I'm using some of my thinner Tamiya tape to get um, around the curves and get a, a good seal around the edge of the frames. And then I use the standard yellow Tamiya tape to fill in the middles. So just a quick update here for the F-18. Uh, because this is an older Hasegawa boxing, it does not include the Lex fences, the little uh, fences that fit on the uh, extensions here that help control airflow over the tails. I'll throw a picture up here of what uh, a Lex fence looks like. Um, but anyways, it is not included in this kit, um, so I am going to have to scratch build them. So I grabbed one of my 148 scale kits, and uh, you can take a quick look at my kit chicken scratch here. So drew out a quick little diagram, did the measurements in 148, which is 17 mil by 12 mil by 4.5 mil. Uh, so that's the basic uh, dimensions, uh, bottom width, length, upper length, and then the height. And then uh, multiply by 48, which gives you full size, which is 816, 576, and 216. Then divide by 72nd, which gets you down to a 172nd scale. And that becomes 8, 11.3, and 3, all in mils. So I'm going to uh, get some sheet plastic and I'm going to copy these dimensions over and then um, uh, we will get this going. So, I mean, it's gonna take a little bit of math because you gotta like, for example, draw the bottom line, which is 11.3, go up three mil, draw the upper line. So draw the lower line, draw the upper line, three mil apart. And then you can mark out an 11.3 line. Uh, you know, the difference between eight and 11.3 is what, 3.3, divide that in half, you get 1.5, uh, 1.65. So you got to go 1.65 mil in on either end, boom, boom, draw a line, boom, boom, draw a line, bang, bang, and then that is your line from there to there, and the upper line should equal eight. So it's going to be, um, you know, a little bit of messing around with that to get it to work out right, um, but at the end I should have a perfect replica that I can then cut out and install on the F-18. So uh, let's get that done now, and then after that we'll be uh, basically ready for paint.
And then here you can see that I've gone ahead and done some pre-shading uh, with the black lines on some of the panel lines. And that just gives the paint a little bit of a broken up look uh, afterwards. Uh, so I went ahead and did that beforehand and then uh, started getting the camouflage paint.
Okay, here we are guys. A uh, bit of a mid-build uh, update for you before I start the decal process. Um, the aircraft itself, uh, as I'm sure you have seen if you've been watching, is painted. Uh, I got the weathering done. I shouldn't say weathering. Uh, Pre-shading is done. Painting is done. Gloss coat is done. Uh, the tails are still here. I'm going to glue them on um, after the decaling is done. The fit isn't atrocious, so I can put them on after the fact and it will still look somewhat presentable. So I'm going to do that um, later. Just use a bit of white glue or some super glue or something to glue the tails on. Always easier to work with the plane without the tail sticking out. Uh, so once that's done, I'm just going to hand paint uh, the exhausts the back and the gun at the front. I'm going to do a little bit of weathering. I mean, I shouldn't say a little bit. I'm probably going to weather this pretty heavily. heavily uh, make it look dirty and used and beat up. Uh, the, the tan tip, I'll paint by hand. And then the base, I uh, have got quite a bit done on the base. Uh, so you can see it's it's done. It's gloss coated. Um, the nameplate is in place. Uh, I've got the sticker, the custom sticker I had made up that was done by um, Bill Burns at Can Mill Air. He used to do a lot of custom decals with a. Uh, uh, it's on the tip of my tongue, and I can't think of it right now. An Alps printer. Uh, unfortunately, ink is very hard to find, and they are going the way of the dodo. So he's moved on to custom vinyl work on larger scale models. And uh, he did this up for me, custom vinyl work with the 410 Squadron logo. So that looks really good. I'm going to uh, gloss coat that with a final coat so it will actually be part of the final coat. And then the F-18 just slides on to the clear acrylic rods and sits like that. So if you look from the head on, it's going to have a little bit of a, uh, a, little bit of a bank to one side. It won't be level, it'll be turning and uh, climbing and turning. So it'll look really good when it's all done. Weather it up, make it look dirty. Give it a good flat coat. So it's coming right along. So like I said, next step is going to be decals and then uh, paint the exhaust, the gun stack, uh, gun port and the nose cone tan. And then it's just going to be a matter of uh, weathering it up, adding some washes, whatever, glue the tails on uh, and then it's pretty much done. Put the drop tanks on, paint up the missiles and everything's finished. So it's looking good. I'm very, very happy with how this has turned out. Um, it's for, like I said, a uh, client has asked me to do this and they are going to be very happy, I believe. So that is the status on that. So stay tuned to see the decals and the weathering. And then here I am starting the decaling process. Uh, as I said at the beginning, I am using the Canuck decals. Um, they did have a tendency, especially on the larger pieces, to shatter pretty quickly to crack. Uh, they weren't as flexible as other decals. However, they did settle down very, very nicely with a little bit of solver set and at the very end uh, I was able to piece back together the few that cracked and they look absolutely amazing when complete.
in here with the decaling complete, I go ahead and uh, seal it with another coat of future and then move on to the, the uh, weathering. And I use a black um, panel wash uh, to get all the highlights done. And then I use for the very first time, uh, some of the Vallejo um, weathering medium. It's a, uh, this is a wash. I got both oil stains and I believe engine crud or engine um, dirt or whatever it was. And just, just break up the panel lines a little. You'll see me putting some around some of like the hinge lines and some of the, the, the gear doors just to make it look like there's a little bit of oil staining and leakage and stuff to, to break up and make it look just a slight bit more realistic.
And then here we are with the finished model. I've got a couple of pictures I put up here so you can get a good look at how, uh, how she looks. Um, and if you want to take a look at uh, the final product, um, um, hop on over to my website and you can see a bit more of the final pictures of how this looked before I hand it off to the client. Thank you for watching guys and as always if you are interested in any of the content you see you can access my website at www.shawns-aviation.com uh, you can see all the uh, latest pictures of aircraft and museums and the build logs of all of my current models and past models on that site and if you're interested in any of this content uh, please click the subscribe button here on uh, youtube to follow more thank you very much and see you guys next time